Hi, C Matt Dye here. Hopefully you're having a great day. And today I want to talk about a little bit into my CNFT trading and what I look for when I get into projects, why I mint certain things, why I buy on the secondary market, stuff like that. So let's talk about minting real quick. I put it I put together a list of what I look for. So if I'm wanting to mint a project, first of all, I come here to CNFT calendar. Maybe there's some better calendars. I uh, so far they're six of one, half a dozen of the other. I haven't found a great calendar, but I found good ones. And that's what this is. So I come here, I look through everything, and when I look through it, I can see what's minting. So that's that's usually what I do. That's step one. I look for a good project and I look for art. I put art on the bottom of the list because it seems like the community they don't care about art. They just care about what looks good. And let me uh, put this down a couple so we can see it better. The community doesn't really care that much about art. So that's why I don't look at art as being number one. But if art catches my eye, I know, I know it's going to catch other people's eye as well. But anyway, I get into the Discord. I look at the team. How is the team? How do they interact with the community? How do they do things? Like Seal Society, for example, just minted. Their whitelist was totally different than most others. Like, uh, I'm going to use Salty Seagulls as, as an example. They wanted you to get to level 20 in their Discord to get whitelisted. That's crazy. And uh, I wasn't a big fan. I left after like half an hour and kind of, you know, I'm not digging this. I asked a bunch of questions and they didn't really communicate very well. I don't want to spread any hate or anything like that. I want everything in the Cardano community to succeed. I want everybody to be successful. So Steel Society had it a totally different way. You didn't grind Discord levels. They rewarded it based on merit. Like if you were in the community engaging with people, helping others, that's how you got whitelist. That's how you got OG status. So look at the team. How do they do things? Is it different? Is it the same? Are they creative? Have they done interviews? And how are they? So that's what I look for first. Of course, the community. How are the people in there? How are they interacting? Are they asking questions? Are they trying to shield their own projects or projects that they have bought into? Stuff like that. Um, have art twice on the list for some reason. I put art right there, actually. But I put it down here just because a lot of people don't pay attention to it that much and sometimes they pay more attention to it um, I look at the website that's very important to me that sometimes I look at the website before I even join their discord I look at the website and okay is the website good alright great well I'm gonna join and I'm going to pay attention because some days I have less time than other days and that's why I do that so sometimes website is up here then join discord and find out these three and then the rest Sometimes it's down here. It depends on how I find the community and how I get there. And then I look at engagement to the community. I know I talked about it up here, community, but engagement, I add with community, but it is a little bit different because community is how people are actually, what they're talking about and, you know, are they talking about themselves? Are you talking about the project? And then engagement is whenever they post announcements and stuff, how is the community reacting to that? and uh, then supplier to follower ratio. So how, how much is the supply? Uh, Sill Project, Sill Society was 3,333. Ape Society was 7,000, I wanna say. Uh, Clay Nation at 10,000. You know, how many followers do they have at that point? You already know how the engagement is because you already did that assessment. Now you're just looking at how many followers to how much supply uh, are Twitter and Discord followers are they drastically off do they have 900 Twitter followers and 10,000 Discord followers that's quite a dramatic difference uh, how's the roadmap how's the utility you already know how the team is if the roadmap and utility are good if you've made it this far I'm sure you have faith in the team and you, you feel that they can actually follow through on something. And that is important. 
so that is kind of what I mean by here. Is the roadmap good? Is it different from everything else? Is it the same? Is it cookie cutter? How is the utility? Does it provide benefit? And what is the story behind stuff? Like, do they have lore? Lore would be a good word to use here. How is the lore? Do they talk about stuff? Do they allow the community to make up their own lore? Do they make up lore? Do they, you know, allow people to kind of do their own thing? Do they have any at all? So that's the next part. And then what's the story behind the actual project? You know, do the do the does the team have an interesting story of how they found the project, how they started it? Do they even talk about that stuff? So that's another thing to look at. So once once I find this, I either want to mint or I don't. Well, with Still Society, I actually minted six. I became an OG whitelist tier one, and I minted six, and then I bought some in the aftermarket or a secondary market, whatever you want to call that. Uh, the reason is because I liked all of this. I liked all of it. So because of that, I minted. I was talking with everybody. You know, we were sharing pictures of our sales and everything. The team is very interesting. They're very creative, and I like that a lot. I love creativity. And I feel the project's going to be good. And whenever people get in and start talking about bad about other projects... You know, they don't do that. They don't talk bad about anything. And I like that. They shouldn't. Like, teams should not talk bad about any project. You know, I don't care if it deserves it. They just shouldn't. Because they're at a level that's above that. So, I do like that. And now I want to talk about what do I look at after everything's been done. So, I put out a video about my top five uh, a couple days ago. And I was talking about Sil Society. And I don't think the chart is really visible anymore. But what it did is it had bounced up. And it, it was under 100. And then it got over 100. And it stayed above it. And then it started to take off a little bit. And that is what I was trying to highlight. And now what OpenCNFT does is a little aggravating. What it does is it just kind of puts the chart it normalizes it rather than showing each and every up and down movement it normalizes everything which is a little ridiculous so but you can look at like the past 24 hours the average price was at 380 and 19 cents uh, average floor price was at 199 um, average floor of 303 ADA so you can look at that. That's not really something I look at. What I do is I, I look at when the project starts to take off. It's just me. Uh, this, this is also normalized. So you can't really see anything. But on mint day, that's what I do. is I come over here and I look at this chart and see everything. If you wait a couple days, see, open CNFT normalizes it. And it's just aggravating. So I'm going to pull up JPEG store and JPEG store actually normalizes it as well. So I don't really have like a great view on this, but I just wanted to talk about it. I want to talk about the things that I look at in a project and what I look towards in a project. Um, if you look at everything, uh, if you go to CNFT jungle, so these are for established projects. So you can see Safari Squad has 13% listings on the market. You can see Ball Scout Rocket Club has 10% listings on the market. Clay Nation has 6%. Uh, Sil Society has 17%. Space Buds has 4%. And sometimes that will kind of tell you a little bit if you look at it day to day. Um, CNFT Jungle is not my favorite thing to look at. But just to kind of show you, like you can look at these and see, okay, well, there's less listings on the market. There's more listings on the market. I'm going to show you a way that I like to look at things. Okay, and because Still Society just minted, I'm going to look at it. And then I'm going to pull up uh, Clay Nation as well, just to give you a different view of things. So if you pull up Still Society, there's 579 listings, and right now it's at 270. So if you go over here to price, you can do 300 max. 
and if you hit go you can see there's 12 listings until you get to the 300 floor and then if you do 400 you can see there's 117 listings until you get to that 400 floor so that will give you a little bit of an idea of the floor is it thin is it not you can kind of see this here the floor is pretty thin like one two three four five six seven eight nine and then you're at 300 so that's uh that's pretty decent this is actually a really nice seal right here and then if i go to uh let me pull up clay nation because it's established it was it's you know been around longer than a year if we go to Clay Nation and then we go to price, this shows us everything for sale. There's 588 listings for sale. So right now, 2590. You can obviously see there's two until you get 2600. You can put in, well, you know, when do we get to 3000? How about something like that? 3000, you click that. There's 34 listings until you get to 3000. Right now, it's at 2590. That's a very thin floor. And when we went to CNFT Jungle, we saw that Clay Nation, there's only 6% listed. So there's not that many listed at all. So very interesting on that. Um, since we're on the topic, let's go to Clay Nation Good Charlotte and look at the difference. Um, Clay Nation and Clay Nation Good Charlotte are both of the one projects to get to participate in the metaverse. And you can see here the floor is at 705. So... How far are we from 800? We have 16 listings until we get to 800. How about 1,000? There's 104 listings until you get to 1,000. So you can see the floor to 800 is kind of thin, but the floor to 1,000, 104 listings, that's quite a bit because you're talking anywhere between 800 and 999 ADA. So that will take a little bit. But that's those are some of the things that I really look for. Now, if the project is established, a lot of times I come over here to open CNFT. Let's get, come over here, uh, maybe take a seven day approach. And we I just look at things that have come down. So eight, uh, chilled, chilled Kongs, <laughs> chilled Kongs, uh, 2350. You know, I was looking at 2000 to 2300 in my video a couple days ago as a base and that could push up and down until the magic mushroom comes out then i'm looking at 1500 to 1800 so you could look at something like that you can go to ugly bros even though that did mint fairly soon but you can see that you know it is actually up in price even though it's down in volume uh pitches are are down in price 399 okay around 3 350 is a pretty good area to grab it so that's one of the things I would look at. Let me click here just, just to kind of show. I usually come up here and then I'll click on uh, this chart here. And I can see, okay, 360 here, 350 there. Uh, right now, four, it's a 399 floor. If it does come back down, then it can give a entry. If it drops below this, you can see the... Minimum was at 309. That's beautiful. That's what I would want to see. I said 250 to 350. 3 to 350 would be a decent area for a nice little snipe there. Uh, Smooth Yeti is another one. I was uh, looking at them. Smooth Yeti Mountain Club. So if we come here, and I actually was looking at these very hardcore around 180 to 200. And you can see that uh, down here, one of them went to 150. Uh, that was a great deal, whoever grabbed that. That was not me. And then over here is 199, 199. And you can see some of this floor was a little lower. Um, but that's kind of what I was looking at. And that's what I do. I come here. But first, I know how the project is. You know, I, I know how the team is, the marketing, all of this stuff right here. The team, the community, the website, how the community engages, the art, supply to followers ratio. If it's a new mint, if it's, a, if it's already minted, who cares about that? Roadmap utility, that's always a biggie. Story lore. Uh, right now, the big thing is like the metaverse, stuff like that. Is every, are they doing a cookie cutter approach or is it slightly different? So that's kind of how I look at it. And then, you know, as you get into the uh, 
CNFT projects, and I talked about you know looking at pullbacks. I don't try to buy stuff if it's going massively high. Now, when when Seal Society minted, I did buy quite a bit on the secondary, you know, paying anywhere from 100 to 199 ADA, and I did grab a naked seal for 399, but I thought that was a really good deal. So basically, the seals. And what I did is I took out a loan, came over, used that to buy that naked seal that's worth a lot more than what I paid for it. So that's really what you're supposed to do. And then over time, you are able to you know flip some here and there and to actually grow. Now, one of the, another thing I want to talk about, if we go here to uh, Open CNFT, is Goat Tribe. I was looking at them recently and I was in their Discord uh, a couple weeks ago talking with people. Uh, not really a fan of the overall project, but I was looking at, I was looking at goats over here. And the reason was our grass token was coming out, which was gonna be a catalyst. And that's another thing I look for is catalyst. When I got into Ape Society, not really a catalyst it was just a really good project i loved everything about it i got once the price came down which if i go here go to activity and i talked about this before over here is when i got in around 350 to 400 i got my last apes but i was i was finding them over here i was trading i traded a lazy llama for a uh uh military i want to say yeah military because he had a pirate hat and then I got uh, the Amato family over here. And then I picked up a floor ape somewhere over here, I think. And then over here, I picked up some more floors. And then I just waited. And that's how I got into that. There wasn't a catalyst. It was just a good project that I wanted to be in long term. When I got into clays, it was a good project I wanted to be in long term. Now, Go Tribe, I started looking at it over here. And I started purchasing some floors. I tried to purchase a couple rares and I couldn't. And that's another topic is rares versus non-rares. So me personally, I like to have some rares, but I love to have non-rares. So with clays, I have a couple rares and I have a lot of floors. The reason being is you can sell floors very quickly. Rares are gonna take a while. So you just have to be able to know that rares are gonna take longer to get rid of. Floors, are, you're going to be able to flip. But if you're in the project for a longer term, rares are very good. So I bought, I got some floor goats right here. It did pop up here to 470. I think it was like 475 at one point. It's saying 469 here. Um, 69, haha. But uh, that's, that's what I did. Looked at it down here, bought it, came up here, and started to uh, get rid of them. Because it's not a project I want to be in long term, but it was a great trade. And it, you know, with commission and everything, and I usually always leave a little bit of profits on the table. You know, you're looking at a, you know, 80, 70, 80, 90 percent trade, probably 80 to 95 percent, which is pretty darn good. And this actually only lasted around like, uh, I think it was over here, like 20th to the uh, 30th. So about, you know, eight to 10 days, you made 80 to 90% on your, on your ADA that you allocated to this. So not really very bad at all. I don't really care about the grass token. I don't really want to be in the community. Uh, it's a good project, but I just personally, I can only be in a finite amount of projects. I can't be in 500 projects because I want to know what's going on. So for me personally, uh, five to 10 projects is kind of the max. And then I can flip some, I can have some flipping projects. And another topic I wanna to talk about is your CNFT portfolio. So me personally, I have a portion allocated to my long-term and I have a portion allocated to short-term. And every now and then I will mint something and I'll be like, man, this is a good project. Like with Seal Society, that's a long-term project for me. So that was my long-term allocation. 
but some projects like Safari Squad I was intending to flip it well the price action was pretty terrible so I held on to it and I recently sold some but that is the thing you know sometimes you're you're looking to flip something and you have to hold on to it for a few days sometimes you're looking to hold something long term like board project board club for example I bought in the board club on mint day it was okay and then a, like a month and a half ago I sold it I sold the whole thing just because I wasn't really feeling it that much the, the community uh, still has some good people in it but I just wasn't feeling the project so I sold it um, sometimes you have to do that so I do recommend looking at your portfolio like every month every week or every month you know um, whatever you can do however much time you can allocate to it that's I think is smart because sometimes projects become stale and other times they don't so those are kind of my, some of my recommendations and that's what I look for in a project uh, if you have any questions you can always leave them down below and with that thanks for watching throw a like on the video if you like it a dislike if you do not if you have any questions, like I said, in the comment section below, hit me up on Twitter in the description if you want, if you'd rather do it that way. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day. I'll see you around the crypto markets. Take care.